27. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is what? Through faith, he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea, which means they saw themselves crossing as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do, we are drowned. Now hear me. That is why where you see opportunities, others see difficulties. Where you see success, others see themselves, they are, fail, they are going to fail. Someone came to me the other day and said, Pastor, something is telling me I will fail. I will fail. I, I was just looking. The next thing, I was almost giving him a slap to correct the mouth. <laughs> I said, shut up! You decide what you hear. My sheep hear it, my voice. The voice of a stranger, they will not follow. And you know, when you are ignorant of the realities of scripture, you tend to believe it. I will fail. I will fail. What if you hear another voice now? I will pass. I will pass. Talk now. Last week I told us, you choose what you hear. You choose what? Because what you hear can make you or mar you. What you hear can heal you and depress or depress you. What you hear can kill your relationship with people that can bless you. Be careful what you hear. You choose what you hear. Jesus said, take heed to what you hear. Be careful. Because anything you hear obviously will paint a picture. It will paint a picture. So he foresee the invisible so he could cross. What you don't see is not likely to take place in your life. It cannot. God operates the rule what seest thou. Faith gives us the capacity to see the invisible. Just as scripture told us in 1 John, I mean 1 Corinthians 5, is it 7 or 17? We walk not. First John, I mean First Corinthians 5 verse 7. We walk not by sight, but by faith. We walk not by sight. No wonder faith makes you to see it before it happens. Everything is turning around for my good. 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 I can see everything. Pause. I'm the one singing, nobody. you. So you must see it. Tell your neighbor you must see it. I can see it. I can see everything turning around. I can see it. And God will be saying, is that what you are seeing? Is that what you are seeing? Okay. I will turn it. I can see. I can see. What are you seeing? You say, Jeremiah, what's yes thou? Do you, do you know what? Every day is a day of vision. Because what you see in that day determine how you will live that day. Every day is a day of vision. Today is going to be a great day. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Every day is a day of vision. You must catch a daily picture of how your day will go. Dr. Casey Price said, 
we have not succeeded by accident. Meaning, before we succeeded, we saw it. <laughs> Papa said, if you have read that book, Winning Invisible Battles, I'm not surprised at where we are now. I would have rather been surprised if we were not there. He said, because I saw it coming. I saw it coming. I'm not surprised at where we are. I would have rather been surprised if we were not there. Now, anyone that is seeing something is doing something. He's doing something in line with what he's seeing. Whatever you are doing now is gradually preparing you for where you will end. Where you will reach. Whatever you are doing now. What, I said whatever. So you should not be surprised when it happens because you are already doing it now. I'm not surprised at where we are. I would have rather been surprised if we are not there. Now, do you know that as a student, before exam, you will know whether you will fail? Is it a lie? You will know. Your prayer and fasting can't change it. Father, blind the eye of the lecturer. Now lie. Blind which eye? Holy Ghost, Holy Spain. Holy Ghost, he said, hold on tight. You pass, you pass. You fail, you fail. <laughs> I won't forget what happened in my second year. First semester. It was already announced that people failed woefully in my department. I've already written my results before I wrote the exam. So when others were going, I said, I'm not going. I said, this picture that I held before I wrote the exam is what I will see. So when they were going, I was on my way to the hostel to go and sleep. So they came back to tell me, Congratulations. I said, for what? He said, 4.22. 4.22. I now brought out the paper. I said, I've already written it before the exam. So I'm not expecting to get a bad news. I'm expecting the good news. Others may choose to fail. Not my head. Everybody go there to answer in Papa's name. Am I saying the truth? So you go there, you go answer your papa name. So if your papa name now failure, you come back and give him failure. Those who see what others can see, don't fear what others fear. If you see what others can see, you can't fear what others are afraid of. Their fear will hinder them from taking risks. But you, because you have seen it, he said, no, it's not a risk. I've seen where it will reach. Those who see what others can't see, can't fear what others fear. The fear of taking step is tied to this fact you have not seen better. Those who see what others can't see will dare what others can't dare. Thereby, they will achieve what others can't achieve. So what we dare, what we venture into is tied to this fact we have seen what others can't see.
and the reason why they are taking steps ahead of you as I'm talking now, there are people that have seen their 2030. There are people that have seen their 2050. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? There are people that have seen their 2060. As you are seeing it, that's how life will be becoming sweeter for you. They are living ahead of you. That's what we call hind foresight. You see farther than others even before they arrive. Some years back, Papa said, what this ministry will be doing till 2030 is already documented. 2030. And we are still in 2018. It is not limited to ministry. That is how your life and my life should be run. Because the farther you see, the farther you go. You can't go farther than you have seen. You can't go farther than you have seen. Those who see further, they move faster. You can't move faster in life if you are not seeing further. They exist beyond limits. They don't allow things to limit them because they have seen further, so they are moving faster. I have discovered that your energy for work is tied to this fact you are seeing further. We were for a meeting two months ago. At about 1 a.m., a pastor came to my room. He said, I want to ask you a question. Where you, do you get the energy that you use in doing all these things you are doing? I just laughed. I said, I can't tell you. Until the day God opened your eye to see. You are in ministry, not of my sponsorship. What you see determines how you live. If you see what I see, the energy to do what I do, you will get it. All of us are not operating at the same energy level. Though. We are different energy level. There are some things that others try. When you try it, you break down. When you try it, many things will scatter. If you see further, you will move faster. Do you know the larger your vision, the larger your creative instinct? I have discovered from my mentors, people with larger vision, their creative instinct is faster. They are seeing further, so they are thinking faster. You are running faster in life does not mean that you, you are a good sprinter. It only means that you are a good thinker. You are a good thinker. You are thinking creatively. The realm you see determines the realm you live in per time. If you see life as hard, things will be hard. If you see people as the reason why things are not working, you are responsible. They are not responsible. I just remember something now. God told me early. He warned me early. He said, put no trust in man of what account is he. It has never shocked me and it will never shock me. The day anybody begin to misbehave, I no go verse. I just know that you are not part of my success for the future. You are to drop at a bus stop. I no go verse. 
Nothing less than 100 pastors have left Papa as the ministry collapsed. For where? They find their way, the man they're on in journey. Because where he's seen is only a privilege for you to follow him. True of us? It's as simple as that. So you dare not say, I have no man. Say, I have a God. I have a God. When God wants to change your realm of living, he opens new visions for you. He brings you to the realms of vision. Paul said, and I went up by revelation, which means he's seen what others can see. The better you see, the higher you go. If you see the natural, you are bound to dwell in the natural. But I want you to understand here that seeing for you to see. Seeing in the spirit brings you to the realm of operating in the invisible because faith operates in the invisible we walk not by sight what the physical eyes can see they are killing people dollar is 360 everywhere is tight say not a confederacy what they call a confederacy neither fear ye their fear when men are saying there is a casting down thou shall say there is a lifting up if you see in the natural you will dwell in the natural that is why people that live above the natural they see things beyond the natural now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or what think so as you are seeing it is doing it god does not only answer us when we pray he also answer us when we see things in our mind he doesn't only answer you when you pray he also answer you as your thought is as i is answering you now to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh within us. Faith also brings you to the realm of living by vision and not by your condition. Your vision has the power to change your condition. Your condition does not guarantee you a provision. It's only vision that guarantees you a provision. No one that scripture says where there is no vision, the people perish. You are perishing not because life is hard, but because there is no vision. Where there is no vision, the people perish. a day of vision. Likewise, every year you are bound to upgrade your vision. You upgrading your vision does not mean that you are there already, but by grace and by knowledge, as you are growing, that's how God will be moving you face by face. Little by little, you are changing levels. You are changing levels. Your opportunity levels is also changing. The people you meet is also changing. The doors that open is increasing in size. To match the vision. God cannot give you opportunity that is bigger than your vision. Your opportunity is directly proportional to your vision. Your opportunities in life. God saw in Genesis chapter 1 
the world before he created it. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 2, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Verse 3, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. He only called forth what he has seen. <laughs> he called forth what he has seen, not what was over it. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, Let there be light. So you don't complain about your challenges. You don't complain about who doesn't want to see you. See yourself. You don't, you don't complain about who doesn't love, you, love yourself. I said it before. Charity begins at home. The day you start liking yourself, people will like you. The day you start liking yourself. You know, you, people always tend to point accusing finger, not knowing that they are the actual problem. This person hates me. You hate yourself first. Like I said before, the much of the hate message and hate signal you send is directly proportional to what you will get back. You can't get what you have not sent. Like yourself first. See yourself becoming better. Before you open your mouth and say, nobody wants to marry me. You didn't just by mistake say it. The thought has been going on. Nobody wants to marry me. Nobody wants to marry me. You see, in scripture, as a man thinketh in his heart, you will remain like that. The day you start to say, somebody will come for me now. Somebody will come for me. My husband is on the way. Now, I've proved this thing. I remember when we are doing full time in Kaduna before our posting. We were giving three days, I mean four days um, off lecture, vacation. So I was standing with Pastor Adeloje on the Kaduna road, heading down east. So Pastor Adeloje said, Pastor, we are going to get a free vehicle to Night I said, You don't start. I said, how do you expect that somebody will come and carry you free here? He said, watch out. He told me that uh, you are riding on my favor now. Do you agree? I said, I agree. He said, Father, I thank you. A favor car is coming for us now. Not all these uh, ritual killers so, and kidnappers that are carrying people free. So as he said it, one company, vehicle, I think it was Tamaku, the guy just stopped. We were dressed on so, so he said, Are you going down east? We said, Yes. He said, Enter. So as we entered, he introduced himself here. I introduced myself. And I asked him, Sir, where are you going? He said, I'm getting I'm going to um, Nigerian Railway Junction in Nightmine, but I can drop you people in Enugu before I turn back. I said, God bless you, that's where we are going. So Adela Jenner tapped me and said, where your transport? <laughs> because he told me that um, we are going to get a favor car. And we got it. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Oh, we got it. So mind what you see. Oh. Mind what you see. You are responsible. You are responsible for what you see. You are responsible for what you think. Nobody is responsible. God saw light. Was not bothered about darkness. He called light. But hear me. Before he called light, light or, or was already existing. Who called those things that be not as though they are? Light was already existing. It was not an imagination. So whatever you desire now is already existing somewhere. Am I saying something to somebody? The husband you are expecting will not be given back to today. It's already existing somewhere. Say what it means existing somewhere. He called those things that be not as though they are. 
So what you say is limited to what you have been seeing. What have you been seeing? Nobody is seeing for you. You are seeing for yourself. God called light and light came forth. So whatever you are looking for is existing somewhere with someone. I was shocked. As of 2016, there was something I included in my expanded vision. No human contact, no mortal contact. February this year, I met someone who was now talking about the thing. He now said to me, when you are ready, just let me know. I will call the guy in the U.S. and he will help you work it out with ease. My wife just tapped me. It brought my mind back to this fact. When your vision determines who you meet. <laughs> your vision in life determine the people God will bring your way. So if you have a small vision, you'll be meeting small, small people. It's true now. Your vision in life will also determine the opportunities you get. Your vision in life will determine the helpers you will meet because I have never Discord that with anybody. Anybody. So your location is not your problem. What he has done. Pastor was showing me something yesterday. In 1998... Donald Trump was Mike Tyson financial advisor. When I was reading it, I said, I just concluded and he never took the advice. He had an advisor, but he never took the advice. Today, Trump is the president of America. His business is still booming. Mike Tyson has gone back to ghetto fighting. Who knows Ajegule? You know Ajegule very well. Now, you know in Ajegule, those days they used to organize street fights. That's what Mike Tyson has gone back to be doing now. He came from street fighting to become a super billionaire. None of his boxing that he has paid less than 100 million. But he has gone to, back to his poverty level because one, there was no vision and he did not take the advice of his advisor. Where there is no vision, the people perish. If he had followed the advice of his advisor, I'm sure... He should have had some superstructures now that will be yielding money for him. He should have had some businesses that he will be sleeping. The business is working. Am I saying the truth? He went and carried an advisor that he will not take his advice. Although cancel is by choice. True of us. There are some people you'll be canceling, they'll be nodding their head. You think they are listening to you. That lie. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, daddy. Yes, daddy. Yes, daddy. Now, lie you. <laughs> what they are proposed to do in is already in their mind. Say what you want to say. I want to go after. I want to go. <laughs> he had one of the best financial advisors that he didn't follow his advice. Oh, what a pity. How do we see? How do you see? We say seeing the invisible and doing the possible. Number one, the scriptures must become your pictures. If you can see the wonders in his book, you will live a wonderful life. Open down my eyes, O oh Lord, that I will behold wondrous things out of thy law for Christ's sake.
the scriptures must become your pictures. And what you picture is what you will see in your future. Psalm 119 verse 18. Open thou my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. I read from one of Padigwe's book. He said, he read, he saw in scripture, day by day, God sent men to help David until he became a mighty host. So, he began to picture himself that he will grow to the point he will have marvelous helpers. Is the man helped today or not? Is he helped today or not? More than helped. So he pictured his helpers because your helpers they determine the faster or fastness of your journey. They determine how fast that things will be for you. You are not designed to struggle out everything that God wants to bring to pass in your life. There are helpers that you must meet in times and season to make sure that you go from one phase to another phase, from one level of success to another level of success. The more you meet them, the faster you go. So he created a picture that his help as they are coming. And truly, truly, they have, they have appeared. May your help us appear. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. Number two, how do you see? You have to see it in the spirit before it can become a reality in the physical. You shall call upon me and I will answer you and show you. The realm of prayer is the realm of the spirit. You shall call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which thou knoweth not. So the realm of prayer is the realm where you see. Do you know you can paint your answers before, your, before it comes while you are praying? Prayer works faster when you are praying with the answer in view. And God will be saying, if this is what you are seeing, I will stretch my hand to do it. What's yes thou? He said, I see the rod of an almond tree. He said, thou as well seen, I will hasten my word to perform it. So if you see it in the spiritual, you will not lack physical manifestation. If you see it in the spiritual, you will not lack physical manifestation. If you see it in the spiritual, you will not lack physical manifestation. You can see obstacles and get miracles. The more obstacles you see, the more obstacles you meet. The more obstacles you see, the more obstacles you meet. I had an encounter in Port Harcourt. Then when um, Pastor Boyomi was our regional overseer, they gave me a very wrong impression. It's normal. You know, humans, they have a way of painting people black. They damage the man's picture. As a hard man, he's wicked, he's this, he's all oh, manner. But I needed favor from him. Now, that was when I bought the book, The Law of Attraction, by Richard Caswell. I sat down, I began to picture Pastor Boyomi. And I was saying in my mind, you must give me this favor. You must give me this favor. For good two weeks and three days, I was brooding over it, The Law of Attraction. I was attracting favor. So I now sent him a message that was on my way to Ngoba to see him. Then the regional office was at Ngoba. So, as we got there, see him coming out. He said, Tony, you, you said you are coming to see me? I said, yes, sir. He said, go and sit down and wait for me. So I sat down and I slept off. So when he now came, when I entered the office, he said, do you care for tea? I said, I won't mind 
I said, oh my. He brought the tea. I drank the tea first. Say with me, favor. favor. You create it. So he now said, hey, what is it that you are talking about? I said, sir, I want that roof down. He laughed. He said, he said, with the way the thing is now, they may not ask about, bring it, bring it, bring it. He just minuted on it and pushed it. He said, I'll send it. He said, could just go. I will come and visit you to confirm so that I'll, as I'm there, I'm calling what he has never done before. And truly, truly, he came. As he was there, he was calling Bishop. He said, sir, that thing Tony said is true. This thing needs to go down now. In less than one week, Say with me in one week. The money landed. That's the person they have painted picture for me that is bad, is wicked. Some of the people they are painting bad for you, they are connected to your favor. That is bad, is wicked. So they were avoiding him. But <laughs> what I wanted is what I actually saw. I painted it and I got it. The next time I visited, he said, let's go to the house. When I got to the house to eat, pounded yam and vegetable soup. Oh my God. The favor you want is the one you will see. You are laughing at me. You don't know pounded yam and uh, vegetable soup is. <laughs> Say with me, favor. favor. Is your name favor? So, for you to see it and not get it, something is wrong. You must create the picture so that you can future in it. Whatever you see, determine the oil you attract. Whatever you see, determine the unction you attract. Whatever you see. Because everything we see attracts an oil. The size of what we see determines the weight of the oil. You can't see bigger and not see bigger. God operates the size of whatever you see will determine the level of grace and oil he will release. Like I said before, the vision God gave to Papa Determine the oil to match. Say with me, the oil to match. And lastly, what you see determine what God will put in your hand. God will not put in your hand what you have not seen. Tell your neighbor, see better. Because the moment you begin to see better, you are attracting something better. Yes, you begin to attract something better. It's a law. It's a law in the spiritual. What you see determines what you attract in your hand. If you have not seen it, you can't attract it. Like I said before, in line with favor, favor is a heavenly product. That makes you matter anywhere you stand. You will not matter in this life because of your labor, but because of favor. You will not. There are people with better skill, better certificates, better connection than you. But when favor rests upon you, you will stand out. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Favor has the capacity to shorten the distance between your dreams and your realities. Favor makes things happen faster than expected. If it's a dream that is to take you 10 years, favor can shorten it down to one year or one and a half. So the distance between your dreams and your realities is determined by favor. Determined by favor. Everyone, like 
I said in the first service, you need favor with God and favor with man. When God favors you, he creates channels of men to favor you. He creates it. That's what we call likability and acceptability. Nothing shortens or reduces the struggle in a man's life like the favor of God. Others are struggling. Others are flourishing by favor. It takes favor to flourish in life where others are struggling in life. You may be struggling and think that you are a hard worker. It's a lie. You are a sofa head. But when favor comes, it reduces your struggle. Favor also colors our efforts. 99% of your effort needs only 1% of favor. One. 1%. Everything will just change. Divine favor is heaven's decision to make you stand out and different where others are suffering frustration. When divine favor is at work, your helpers, they lose their sleep. Why? Because you must be blessed. You must be blessed. I say you must be blessed. Divine favor gives you preferential treatments ahead of others. When God releases divine favor upon you, laws are suspended. Protocols are broken. Why? It is your set time of favor. And in this banquet service, watch out. Favor like never before will drop upon your life. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Divine favor is the spiritual capital everyone needs for constant advancement. You want to be making regular progress? You need fresh favor. The more the favor of God is dropping upon you, the more progress you'll be making. Life is not to you according to your struggle. Life is to you according to favor. According to favor. According to favor. And Daniel was more preferred. Daniel was more preferred. Please, I beg you, pray that prayer. Lord, cause me to be preferred by your favor. It's a forceful prayer. I learned that prayer in 2003. Cause me to be preferred by your favor. Cause me to be preferred. Daniel was preferred more than the others. With his friends, they entered the list. So when favor is at work, you don't suffer diversion of blessings. What is meant to be given to you cannot be given to others. One sign to know that you are no longer in favor. Any time something good wants to take place, Satan will make you cause trouble. Or he will make you misbehave. I've seen that over and over in the life of some people. And I'll tell them, go and pray. There's a demonic force following you. Anytime something good wants to happen, people will just change their mind. Go and check it. Something is wrong with your life. But that spell will break today. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Why is it that they are turning down your own paper and others' papers are being accepted? Why? There are favor blockers that must be dealt with. Favor determines the frequency of prophetic fulfillment in your life. When favor blockers are at work, anytime something good, they'll go and block it. 
they will go and block it. Or they will move you to do something that will block it. Something happened to one sister. I'm tired. I'm tired. She has not said what is. So me, my just cook my day. Look, they watch film. So, what am I to pray for? I'm just tired. So I should pray that you are just tired. <laughs> Why is it that anybody that come two, three months, four months, they will just change their mind? Uh, if I want to kill myself. I said, Emirates go carry you straight to her fire. Straight to her fire. You know, there is earth fire and there is her fire. You test earth fire first before you enter her fire. So, I said, Number one, have you asked yourself what is really the problem? The problem is not with God. Is it that something is wrong spiritually or you have done something? To some of them, it's marine powers. Do you agree with me? They have powers to spoil marriages. So if you don't deal with it, they will deal with you. Like I said in the first service, that's our classmate. She felt on top of the world. On top of the world. The most beautiful Was it in 2010 or 2009 that I met her in Lagos? The yellow face don't turn to puff puff. So I asked her, her what do you do? He said, Pastor, I'm tired. <laughs> she now goes to Mountain of Fire. She, wanted, she wants the demon to leave quick. So that she can catch a brother. Marriage is not to you because you have fine body. We don't see people who get fine body. If now your fine body, why you never catch them? It is to you according to favor. What you need is to pray for favor. Don't say, if they get, I then go see. They're not going to see you. If they get I they go see. For where? Why they never see? What you need to pray for is favor. Stop deceiving yourself. There was a wedding that took place in Asaba Church in 2005. If you see the sister, my father, she was larger than life. <laughs> when I mean super heavy, I've not seen anybody equal her size in this church. I'm not joking, no. If you see the brother that marry him, marry her, James, stand up. The brother is as tall as James. But slimmer than James. So my pastor now said, Is this the person? He said, Yes. You mean this is the person? He said, Yes. Meaning everybody knows what he's looking for. Am I saying the truth? So it was not the size that was the problem. 
that was the person that God has favored him with. Two of us. Others will say, hey, no, she do big. Now your eye, now you the talk. For as far as that man is concerned, I can remember the man very well. He's a mobile officer. Agile mobile officer. He said, that's the one I want. Pastor said, you mean everybody busted into laughter. He too was laughing. The lady was laughing. He said, that's the one I want. So, my pastor now said, so you want it big? He said, yes, I want it big. May you be located. Whatever look like an evil spell driving good people away from you, that spell be broken to the name of Jesus. I have one divine guarantee that by this communion, God will change your smell. Um, the father of Jacob said, the smell of my son is like the smell of the field which the Lord has blessed. Favor gives you a unique smell. Gives you a unique smell. Favor is a divine perfume. And as you partake of this communion, whatever look like an evil smell of rejection, smell of reproach, smell of shame that is haunting your life, denying you of favor, the yoke will be destroyed in the name of Jesus. There are some people in the realm of the spirit when you see their face, is you see rejection. Because that's the picture that has been painted by the wicked against them. Rejection. Drive him away. Drive him away. Drive him away. Drive him away. But not today. As you partake of this communion, whatever is contrary to favor in your life, by the blood they will be deleted. Rise up to your feet. You are stepping into a new order of favor. And that's why you must see it by faith as I'm prophesying over your life. Of the multitude I've received from Papa, from Bishop Abie, from Bishop Aremu, from Paul Enche, from David Biome, from Pastor Jeme, I decree that favor will be duplicated. You are going to pray, Lord, by this communion, perfume me with favor. Lift up your voice and pray from the depths of your heart. Perfume me with favor. Change my smell. By this communion, I am going from here with the smell of favor, the smell of acceptance, the smell of likability, the smell of progress, the smell of lifting. Lift up your voice and pray. The God of Oyeriko is changing your smell today. You will smell like the one that the Lord has blessed. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. We have prayed. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. After this communion, your name will be ringing bell in the heart of your helpers. Amen. I'm praying for you now, so as you say amen, mean it in your hearts. After this communion, decisions that was taken to keep you on the same spot, I decree it reversed in the name of Jesus. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. As you partake of this communion, whatever look mysterious in your life that is increasing disappointment than open doors, that evil spell be wiped out in the name of Jesus. Amen. All eyes close, all eyes bow. If you are not born again, you cannot be favored by God that you, Jesus that you have not accepted. He has to be a Lord and Savior in your life before his favor can be duplicated upon you. You want to make it right with Jesus wherever you are right now? Put your hand on your chest as I'm doing and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. 
I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord and be my Savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you pray that prayer with me, wherever you are, inside and outside, come right now. I want to pray with you. God bless you. Inside and outside, put your hands together for Jesus. If you are coming, come quickly. God bless you. 